Hello, I'm Kyle. I'm the technical content developer at Maple Systems. Welcome to the Maple Systems video training series. In this video, I will be showing you how to connect an HMC with a remote I.O. via Modbus. I will be using Mapware 7000 and Easy Remote I.O. programming software. I'll specifically be using an HMC4070 connected to an IRETN coupler and two remote IOs, an AM06V1 and a DQ08R via Ethernet. The AM06V1 will be configured to get the analog input from a J thermocouple, and the DQ08R will be configured to get the digital output using an LED light. Before we get started, you will need to have the Easy Remote I.O. version 1.1 software downloaded on your PC. You can find this on the Maple Systems website under the Support tab, Software and Upgrades. As well, make sure you have the IR Series Remote I.O. Product Specification Manual downloaded on your PC. This can also be found on the Maple Systems website. Here is a wiring diagram and network configuration for connecting a remote I.O. to your HMC device. You can also find this on the how to connect an HMI plus PLC combo with a remote I.O. via Modbus tutorial page on the Maple Systems website. When you are configuring your Ethernet settings for your PC, your remote I.O. and your HMC device, make sure they are on the same subnet. As well, make sure the last octet of each IP address is different. So, as you have just seen from the wiring diagram, I am going to be using a J thermocouple to get the analog input on the AM06V1 remote I.O. module. And to get the digital output on the DQ08R, I'll be using an LED light. So, first we will need to configure those two remote I.O.s with a Modbus protocol in our network configuration. So over on the left, go to network configuration. And because we are using ethernet, we'll be using COM3 ethernet. You would then click, right click and hit add. Now I already have my two nodes, my two remote IOs configured here, but I will show you how I set these up. So first the AM06V1 when you right click and hit add, it'll open up this window. And now I named it AM06V1. And as far as protocol, you would select Modbus TCP master. Now you are selecting master because the HMC device, the HMC4070 is the master. And the slate devices are the remote IOs. Now the ethernet PLC IP address is going to be the IP address on the IR coupler. So the IR ETN, that's the address you'll type here. So you're actually typing the slave address, which would be 192.168.0.212. Now you would find this IP address in the IR ETN manual. It'll tell you what the address is here. So once you've named it, and configured this. Now also up here for address, we're going to start at one. In Mapware, we always start at one, so we're going to put one here. And then you hit apply as well for the second one, the DQ08 will be the same configuration, same IP address, same protocol. And then you would hit apply, and then you would have two nodes selected here. So now, Open up Easy Remote I.O. When you first open up, it'll look like this. And the first thing you need to do is go to Add Network Coupler. Now, just like I mentioned in our network configuration for Modbus protocol, this is your IRETN settings. So the IP address is going to be that address I mentioned, 192.168.0.212. Hit OK. And now, this is configured. The next thing you'll do is go to edit again, hit add. Now you're going to click module. And the module I'm using is the IRAM06V1. It has four analog inputs, two analog outputs. Hit OK. Next, we'll add the second IO module. 
and that's going to be the IRDQ08R. So now going back to Mapware, I want to create two tags. One for the AM06V1, which is going to be the analog input for the J thermocouple, and another for the DQ08R, which is going to be the digital output using an LED light. So to do that, go to tags. Now I already have them created in here, but I'll show you how I did it. First one is the analog input one, because I'm using analog input one on the remote IO. So for node name, I selected the AM06. This has to be selected here. And then for register type, it's a holding register. Now, the register here, I have 40002. Now, you might be asking why I'm choosing two, because it's one off in a mapware. So if you're using analog input one on your remote IO, the register needs to be two in mapware. So if I go back to my remote IO and I go to the AM06, go to my address map, as you see here, channel zero starts at zero, zero X zero 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 zero, but channel one starts on one for the remote IO. But in Mapware, because we are starting at one, meaning that one would be zero and two would be one. So that's why I have two selected here. Same thing for the digital output. I'm starting at one because for the row IO starts at zero. Mapware is one off. And also for this one, you would select the node name, which would be the DQ08. And it's a coil. So the register type, you would select the coil. And then your address would be 000001. So let's go back to our easy remote IO. So now that you know what your addresses will be, let's go to the AM06 for the analog input. Here is where you would monitor your online values. So you'd be looking at analog input one, and then as well for DQ08, you're looking at digital output zero. Now let's go back to the AM06. Let's go to the parameters tab. And here we'll be looking at input mode one because you're using channel one. And I have it set to 10 volts and I have the other inputs closed because I'm not using them. And then for the upper range, the scale is set to 32,000. And then for the lower is set to zero. Now this will come in handy when we build our scale and function to get the scale value for our analog input in our logic and mapware. We will need to use these two numbers here in our scale and function. Now at the bottom here, it's just where you enable and disable the channels. So because I'm not using any of these, I'm just going to have analog input channel one enabled. Now you would simply do that by just double clicking and you can enable and disable it. Now let's go back to Mapware and we will need to scale our raw value for analog input. Now to do that, go to your logic blocks. On their main, I have one created called scale temp. This is going to be the temperature of the J thermal couple. Now, as you can see here, I'm using analog input one, but I also had to create a tag, a local tag, because there are no tags generated by default in Mapware 7000 if you are using a remote IO. You have to use Modbus address in it. So in order to use those Modbus addresses in our logic, we have to create user-defined local tags. So to do that, go to your tags folder. Now I have them created already. Now I created a word here because it's going to be a data register. So analog input register one, word, hit okay. As well for the digital output because the logic can't read the Modbus address. I created a bool, which is digital output coil zero, hit okay. As well for our logic, for our scale and logic for analog input, I created a real tag called temperature real and the scaled value will be temperature scaled. It will be a real as well. So if we go back to our logic, so we'll need to take this word register and convert it to a real. Now, in order to do that, you would go over to your 
conversions and take the any to real, convert to real, drag it over. For your input, it would be the analog input register one, be that word register, and your output would be temperature real, which is your real register. Then you would take the scale in function, which is under the maths folder, scale in, drag that over. For your input will be the temp real, same tag. Your minimum, your input minimum will be zero. Now, like I said, for that value is right here. So here's your low limit here, which is zero. Put that here in your input minimum. Your input max is 32,000, which is right here, 32,000. And again, for our specific J thermocouple is the output minimum is going to be zero, as far as zero degrees Celsius that is, and 300 degrees Celsius will be your output max. And then for your output and your scaling is your temp scaled value here. And that's it for your logic. Once you configure your logic, you will need to create a task. Now let's go to our task folder. In order for the HMI to read that Modbus address, we will need to create a copy HMI PLC block. So we're gonna be copying that analog input one Modbus address to the analog input register one, that word register we created locally. So to do that, make sure you select global task and then under task, you're going to select copy HMI PLC block to HMI block. And then for tag A is going to be that word register we created, the analog input register one. And then tag B is going to be the Modbus address, analog input one. Then you would hit add and it brings it over to the global task. Now, as well for the digital output for the LED light, you will need to do a copy tag B to tag A. It's a little different for a coil. You wouldn't use the same task here. So it's gonna be copy tag digital output coil zero, which is the bool we created. And then you're copying that to digital output zero, which is the Modbus address. So tag A destination is going to be the Modbus address and the source is going to be the bool we created. And then you would hit add and it brings it over to the global task. Let's go online to make sure we're getting communication to the remote IOs. So go to online. Now, if you change any parameters here, you will need to first go to online and then hit download. As you can see, download parameters is completed and it was successful. So let's go to online, start monitoring and the monitor is started. So to make sure that you are connected, you can see that this is highlighted green and you know that you are connected. Let's go to the AM06 IO modules and you can see the analog input channel one is reading an online value. Now let's go back to Mapware. Let's download this project, go to mode, go online with download. And if you're downloading for the first time, make sure you have firmware checked off. And if you change any network configurations for your Modbus addressing, you will need to always download the firmware first and then the application. So in this case, I've already downloaded the firmware once, so I did not change anything. So I'll just need to download the application, hit download. Download completed, hit close. It will say run in the compile window. And you can see in your logic it is reading that same value for the raw value. So if you go back to easy remote IO, it's that same value. And now you can see on the camera feed, you can see the IR coupler and the two remote IOs. As well, I'm using a signal generator to generate a J thermocouple signal. And you can see on the signal generator, that is set to 100 degrees Celsius. On the HMC device in our data window here, it's reading about 102.9, about 103 degrees. You have to consider some accuracy errors with the signal generator. Okay, now let's test out the digital output. Turn this from false to true. And as you can see in the camera feed, the red light for digital output zero turned on as well as the LED light itself turned green. 
And now let's go to Easy Remote I.O. And as you can see, we're online and we're monitoring. And you can see for digital output zero, the online value is one, meaning that it's on. Now go back to Mapware. And if we turn this to false to turn it off, you can see that it's off on the I.O. module as well as the actual LED is off. And if we go back to Easy Remote I.O., you can see the value is zero meaning that it's off. So this is how you would connect an HMC with the remote IO via Modbus using Mapware 7000 and Easy Remote IO. This concludes the video. To get more information, please visit the how to connect an HMI plus PLC combo with the remote IO via Modbus tutorial page on the Maple Systems website. Thank you for watching.